All right, welcome back. I hope everyone had fun with the styles that we talked about. Um, today we're going to continue with the style talk, and uh, we're going to be working through the Allstate jazz material. And these tryouts are split into two sections. One is with charts and some audio that you have to play along to a chart. And then the second is uh, to play solid time within four different styles. And uh, it's like a slow swing, a Latin style, a funk style, and an up-tempo swing. So uh, grab some sticks, grab a practice pad, drum set, anything like that, and uh, let's get started. All right, so talking about the styles portion of the Allstate jazz material, um, you have to play four styles, jazz, funk, Latin, and then up-tempo swing or something fast. So um, for all of these styles, there's going to be things we want to make sure happen, and there's going to be things that we want to make sure don't happen. So let's first talk about what we shouldn't do. Um, one is uh, don't get caught up on what groove you're playing. Um, the judges are not sitting back there thinking, okay, if someone plays page 10, exercise 34, they're in. You could have 15 drummers play 15 grooves and they're like, you're going to have 15 separate grooves. It's not going to be the same every time. So don't get caught up on which one you're playing. Um, as long as you are comfortable with it and it's solid and it's within that style, then it's great. Um, two is we don't want to be thinking this is my chance to show off cool drum fills and what I could play on a drum solo and all of that because they're asking for um, 16 bars of time. So we want to make sure this is time that supports other players and supports what would be happening in a jazz situation, not um, just a drum solo situation. So we kind of want to avoid that. And then the third thing we, we want to avoid is um, we want to avoid being overly loud or soft like we don't want to be at any extreme of that right because all they're asking for is um, time which could be a lot like you could play well like what it could be a really loud time it could be a shout chorus time where you're really you know chopping wood hammering on the drums or it could be really soft time behind like I don't know like a flute solo or something crazy like that and that's fine and when you're in a jazz situation that may happen but for something like a tryout we want to kind of cut down the center and so we don't want to be so soft to where the judges can't hear what we're playing but we don't want to be so loud that we're no longer within the style anymore so we want to kind of keep everything um, as centered as we can which is hard to do because these styles are super broad right we if we're talking funk we could think of a hundred funk grooves right now and they would all be acceptable so those are some things we want to avoid. Um, what we want to make sure happens on all of these styles is we want to make sure they're in time. That's the most important thing. So when we're practicing these, we want to make sure we're playing to a click track, right? So pulling up your phone or whatever, setting it at 140 or 120 for that swing and make sure we play at that tempo over and over and over and over that way when the tryout finally comes we can sit down we can play our swing and it's right in time so first thing it's got to be in time the second thing is we need to make sure that we actually play 16 bars of all of these styles um, 16 bars is not that much time right but because these styles are changing from, uh, you know, you have like a kind of a slow swing to an up-tempo swing, um, 16 bars isn't going to be the exact same amount of time. So if 16 bars of slow swing takes, I don't know, let's call it 60 seconds, then 16 bars of up-tempo swing may only take like 20 seconds so you can't judge it off of how long you've been playing you have to actively be counting in your head and thinking okay 16 bars because that is something that the judges if you play you know eight bars that's something that you know right there that's going to be a slash mark or something because that was not the appropriate amount of time and that's an easy thing to fix you just got to make sure you're actually practicing 16 bars of each style so that has to happen and then the final thing that has to happen is 
um, we need to keep in mind that we are playing time in a jazz situation. So if we're thinking about playing a chart, um, you know, the intro of the chart, the main chunk of it, we're setting up figures, we're playing drum fills to set up horn lines and things like that. When we're playing just straight time, nine times out of ten, it's on a solo section. So there's a trumpet solo going on, there's a sax solo, there's a guitar solo, someone is soloing. So our time has to be interacting with that soloist, our time has to be something that supports the soloist, right? So we want to keep that in mind while we're playing that, okay, even though I'm playing time, just the drums, and there isn't anything else happening, could a soloist play over what I'm playing? And for a lot of drummers, if they don't think about that, then the answer is no. A soloist could not play over that because drummers like to throw in all these cool drum fills and they like to throw in all their cool comping ideas and everything they've been working on. And to a soloist, it just sounds like, okay, well, you're playing everything. I don't have anything to play now. So we want to make sure we have comping ideas that make sense. And a great way to ensure that what our time is playing is um, making sense is going to be to play over a song form, right? So all of these songs or all of these styles, I should say, we can treat them like small, tiny, little songs, um, are 16 bars. So if I was playing 16 bars of a style and I wanted to make sure I played 16 bars, then I would want to be thinking of a song in my head, maybe an eight bar phrase of a song, and then play through that twice. Because one, that's going to ensure that everything I play kind of makes sense with that song form. And then two, I can make sure I play the appropriate amount of time because I play through it two times, that's 16 bars. So there's a lot of options for this. Um, if you have been playing jazz, then you've probably heard of a lot of songs that would work over this. Um, the one thing that I think is there's a jazz standard called C Jam Blues. And it's super simple. It just goes ba da ba da ba da ba ba That's the whole tune. It's super simple. And if you play vibes or something, it's a great song to play because you play C the whole time. It's the easiest song in the world. But if you played that four times, you would have 16 bars, right? There's a bunch of other songs you can do too. You could do... Um, it doesn't even have to be a jazz song. You could take like, um, oh, I don't know, like any kid's song, anything, anything that is eight bars long. Sing through it in your head. And if it's eight bars long, great, it's there. And if you can sing through that in your head while playing, that's going to really help make sure that you're playing 16 bars and that all of your comping ideas are being created around a song form. And that's gonna make you sound much more um, put together than someone who's just, here's 16 bars of stuff I've worked on. Okay, so that's something to consider and something to kind of, you can try in your own practice. And if you, um, if you come up with a song that we haven't talked about today, that's great. Like I said, there's hundreds of them. You could go through a fake book and almost, I would say probably 50% of those songs, if not 80% are gonna be, you know, eight bar phrases or 16 bar phrases. And um, there's a bunch of famous ones, you know, so you could go through, find any of those songs. If you play vibes, you can play them on, that's, that's how I do it, is I play it on vibes first so I can kind of hear it. And then I go on the drum set and try to kind of play around that. So that's a really good way to approach the time. So, all right, so let's jump in and let's start talking about um, these styles a bit more specifically. All right, so starting with, um, you know, getting behind the set and starting to play these styles, if you're unsure of what to play, and you're like, I have zero idea what grooves to play, um, go back and consult the styles that we talked about because um, we talk about all of these styles. The only one we didn't really hit was up tempo swing. But if you're thinking, isn't up tempo swing just faster than the slow swing? Yes, it's exactly that. And really, when we're playing all of these styles, if I'm working on a samba style, 
um, we should be practicing them probably at three speeds, you know, like a slow speed, like 50, 60, that's kind of painfully slow. So we need to be practicing at that speed. We need to be practicing at an in-between sweet speed. So like 120, 130, 140. And then we need to be practicing it at an up-tempo speed, which is going to be like 180 plus. Okay. So if we're practicing all these styles at three speeds, then it should be a really easy transition to take that Latin groove that we've been practicing. Maybe it's more of a salsa groove and that works and just maybe slow it down to where it fits with how fast we have to play. Um, and <clears throat> that's going to be, um, that's going to be a way you can approach this is to take grooves you're comfortable with and apply those to the drum set. So if you have, you know, everyone has a favorite groove. If you have a favorite samba pattern that you like, I know I have one, I've got two or three that if I'm reading a chart and it says samba, I'm starting with this because I know I can set up figures around it. I know, you know, I know the independence around that groove and everything. So you want to pick something comfortable within all of these styles. Um, but let's talk a bit more specifically about them. Um, if we're talking about the swing style, the most important thing is going to be our ride cymbal and our hi-hat, right? And our left hand is going to be comping. So we really want to make sure that our right hand time and our left foot time with those hi-hats is really solid. So be sure to spend some extra time on that, making sure that everything's coming down even. We don't have any flams between the cymbal and the hi-hat. They're both coming down. And then if you've been thinking of a song in your head, right, then making sure your comping ideas are... Um, helping to support whatever song you're singing in your head. So if it is that C jam blues, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum, then you could be playing, duh, you know, playing your time, and then you're comping. Bum, 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 and then maybe you flip it around, bum, bum, go up to the toms or something, you know. But you can take that same little four bar phrase and kind of flip it around and then if you play it four times boom you've got 16 bars and you're solid so we're gonna keep that happening for the swing style Latin style is gonna be the exact same thing we want to keep it in time um, we want to make sure it's solid and for the Latin um, really for all the styles since we have 16 bars one thing we can do and this is totally optional because you can make an argument for staying on the same symbol is we could switch halfway through so if we're playing jazz time with our right hand on the ride symbol we could play eight bars over here and then switch to our crash symbol or our second ride or our swish or something like that just to kind of change up the form and one thing that shows the judges is that you understand the form of what you're playing you played eight bars over here you played eight bars over there that's a 16 bar form, you know, that's the A section over here and then a solo switched over here. It kind of shows that you're um, a bit more involved with this form of the song. And same thing if we're talking about a Latin style, right? We could play um, on the hi-hats for the first eight bars and then maybe go to the cymbal for the second eight um, and do something like that. Now, one thing I do want to talk about specifically is the funk style, because this is one that um, I feel a lot of drummers at these tryouts, they overplay it. Usually the swing style sounds pretty good. The Latin style, they've got a good samba going or something like that. The up tempo is fine. And then we get to the funk style and it's just let me play everything I've ever played ever, because that's the style that we've heard um, forever, right? Because if you've heard rock music or the Chili Peppers or anything, it's all kind of this rock funk stuff. But one thing you can do here is going to be simplify what you're playing. You still want to have some syncopation in there, right? Maybe some open hi-hats or some 16th note stuff happening um, to kind of have a funk feel, but don't overplay it with a ton of drum fills and um, just changing everything. Because one thing the funk groove has to have is a groove. And and for something to groove, it has to be something repetitive. That's the only way a groove can happen, is for a pattern to repeat. So if you change what you're playing on the hi-hats every four, you know, 
if you change it all the time, then it never really settles into that groove. So my suggestion for the, um, for the funk style would be to maybe think in four bar phrases, right? So play that groove for four bars and then maybe at the end, maybe that's when you throw in that open hi-hat, okay? And then at the end of eight bars, maybe that's when you switch to the ride cymbal, right? So, cause we still wanna keep that groove happening all the way through. So once all that's happening, um, a good way to practice these is to put on a click, right? Put on your headphones and put it at 140 or whatever tempo you're playing at and play it with that click in your ear, you know, play your time and play 16 bars and then turn the click off play 16 bars at that same time, turn the click back on and see if you're close, right? So you're checking in. Um, and what you'll find, and what I find when I do that is, oh man, I sped up or I slowed down on this or, you know, but as you practice it, your internal clock will get stronger and stronger. And eventually you'll play it at 140 and you'll stop the click and you'll turn it on and it'll be right there at 140. And what that's telling you is you now have some solid time happening right there. Because one thing I would think the judges probably are um, checking is going to be the tempo. So they probably have a phone or a, a metronome of sorts, and they're probably going to, as soon as you start playing, I know if I was judging it, I would, and I'd be tapping it out going, okay, cool. They started at 138. All right. Where'd they stop? Ooh, 122. Okay. Downhill, right? We're going down. And what that would tell someone in, like a judge would be, okay, so their style's really good, the form was great, but their timing wasn't so solid. And that's a hard sell to put someone in a jazz band if their timing's not solid, right? So the, that, you know, that goes back to the very first thing we talked about. The timing has to be rock solid. So I know that's a lot of talking, and I know it's some of it's kind of broad, but that's because these styles are super broad, right? So pick a groove you're comfortable with. Doesn't have to be complex, doesn't have to be hard. It just has to be one that feels good, um, it has a good groove to it, and something you can play consistently, okay? So let's jump behind the drum set. Um, I'm gonna play 16 bars of all of these styles, kind of 16 bars of what I would play. Um, don't feel like this is something you have to copy or try to do or anything. I'm just gonna play what I'm comfortable with. So like I said, I have some Samba patterns I like that are my favorites. I have some swing comping ideas that are my favorite. But one thing I am gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to kind of be thinking of some songs while I'm playing so that my comping ideas within all of these styles um, make sense. So let's jump behind the drums, let's try this out and see what it sounds like in context. <laughs> 